the uh, auditing feature which you can turn on in a web project is automatically uh, enabled when the user uh, makes an edit to a table in the list uh, in the list control with a detail view in, in using a UX component or using a UX component that is data bound or using a grid component however uh, if the user just simply executes some XBasic code that makes an update to a SQL table, then unless you manually add some code to your XBasic, the audit table will not be updated. So you can see here, for example, um, we currently have uh, two records in our audit table. And we're going to go now to this uh, UX component here and uh, make an edit, hit the save button and then go ahead and synchronize and now when we refresh our audit table we can see there's now three records there, this last record was an update. However, if we now were to go and execute some XBasic code, so for example here is some XBasic code that's going to um, update the one of the tables in, in a database, unless we manually add some code to uh, capture the audit information, the audit table would not be updated. So you can see that in this case here, we have, we're opening a connection to the SQL database, we're setting some argument values over there, and here's our update statement that's going to update a table called compound PK, and um, in order to update the audit table, what we need to do is before the actual uh, SQL update gets performed, we need to capture the before values. So this helper function here called get audit info from SQL statement is used to get all of the before values. So you can see we pass into this function the SQL that we're going to use to update the um, uh, the, the backend database and we also pass in the arguments but we actually just pass in the XML for the arguments so basically once you've got an argument object you can just reference args.xml to get the XML of those arguments and then after the update has perf been performed we call another helper function called write to auditing log and uh, this function takes the connection string that you've used the type of operation that you did, so in this case the operation was an update statement, this needs to be set to uh, data JSON over there. Then you also need to specify what the primary key is of the record that was being updated, so that's going to be uh, first name comma last name, and then the primary key value, and in the case where the primary key is a compound primary key, the convention that we're using is we separate the pieces of the compound primary key with three vertical bars. So let's go ahead now and run this uh, to perform the update and now let's go over to our audit table and do a refresh and we can see that we got another update over there. The update was done by an unknown user and that's because we're not uh, using the security framework at the moment in which case the name of the user would have been obtained from the security framework. The table that we updated was compound under bar FK the primary key was F uh, first name comma last name, the primary key value was this and if we go look at the actual data that was captured for the update we can see that um, the new value of the name field is uh, this random string here which is what we set uh, over there to a, rand a five character random string and the old value was uh, name one. So in the case where you're writing your own XBasic to perform CRUD operations, if you want those operations to be tracked by the audit table, it's necessary for you to manually add these two um, uh, uh, functions into your XBasic code. So the uh, before update uh, function only needs to be executed um, in the case where you're actually doing uh, uh, an update or a delete um, and in the case where you're doing an insert basically uh, it's not technically necessary to execute this command but um, as a matter of practice it's easier if you do execute this command and that's going to capture all the data that gets written into the uh, log table in the right format. Thanks very much for watching. In the previous video we showed how when you're executing SQL commands manually to update a table it's necessary to write into the audit log yourself um, and we showed how uh, an update was performed. In this case we're going to do an insert into, the, uh, into a table and you can see here that um, 
in this uh, XBASIC code we have over here before the actual insert is executed we execute this um, uh, line of code here to get the uh, data that is going to be written to the order table and technically uh, for an insert there are no old values there's only the, the new value so for an update we capture both the old value and the new value of each field that was updated but in the case of an insert there are no um, old values but um, it's useful to actually still call this function before the update uh, takes place because this function will capture all of the data that needs to be written for the new values into a convenient JSON format over here which can then be written into the uh, auditing log uh, when you actually execute the command to write into the auditing log. So you can see how we're going to add a new record to this table called compound pk. So we'll go ahead and run the command and then we'll go now and look at our auditing log and we can see how we've got an insert over there and if we go look at the data that is shown here we can see that the old value is blank because it's an insert but the new value shows the record that got inserted uh, into the uh, data. Thanks very much for watching.